Alright, I am back with another Destiny 2 video, and this time I am going to go into something that I have only discovered recently has kind of been circulated around the lore community, and that is the idea that potentially Savathun, when Savathun gets the light and gets her own ghost, is actually using Sigira uh, repurposed. So she has ganked Osiris's ghost, and Sigira is now her ghost. Um, this theory stems from a lot of different things. It's not just kind of one thing. Um, first of all, people notice that Savathun's ghost is distinctive from all the other Hive Guardian ghosts that we've seen in the preview materials. Um, her has, has some extra little pointy things in it, uh, so she has her own unique shell. Obviously, all Guardians can have their own <laughs> unique ghost shells, and it doesn't really matter what shell the ghost is wearing. It's just uh, a matter of kind of the intrinsic nature of the ghost itself. Uh, but that did get people thinking about um, the possibility of where Savathun got her specific ghost in the first place. Uh, so as we know, the story as it's told is um, Sagira blew up uh, and it like exploded her light in order to save Osiris. And uh, this is when th this happened on the moon. This is when um, Savathun scooped in and abducted Osiris. Uh, and so the, the timing of this, when Sigira is supposedly dead, or her shell is laying around, or whatever, is right around when Savathun made the big old switcheroo and became Osiris. Um, I, I, I think that when we hear from Osiris after Sigira has blown herself up, that is the first time we're talking to Osiris as Savathun, I think. So... In the, there is a lore entry where it's one of the creepy ones. I think it's in the bow from this season where Osiris is kind of like locked in Savathun's consciousness as he's like seeing her do stuff with his body and he's remembering he's remembering Sigira blowing up. So I, I believe that that is confirmed that that happened. Uh, another thing that is going on right now, which I find kind of odd and I don't know why they would bring this up unless there was some sort of significance to it, is that um, in an effort to find where Osiris is, the, because they're not <laughs> trust Savathun to tell us, uh, Saint-14 and his good buddy Mithrax are off on an adventure to try and find uh, where Sagira fell and where Sagira blew herself up. Um, this, again, is somewhere on the moon right now. I believe the last we heard from them was that they were going to Clovis Bray facility on YouTube, um, uh, I almost said YouTube, on Europa to find, I, I forget, it was like find some tech that will allow them to pinpoint uh, Sigura's location on the moon to find exactly where she fell. I guess the idea is if you find where Osiris was taken, that will give you some insight into where Osiris could be getting held. I I don't really understand the whole idea of trying to find Osiris that like Savathun has, has him scrolled away somewhere. I don't buy the theory that Osiris is dead. I feel like this would be an awful lot of song and dance to just reveal that Osiris has been dead this whole time. So I don't think that's happening. Uh, but I assume Savathun has him like tucked away in like the Ascendant Realm or her throne world or somewhere that we can't just like get to. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what Mithrax and Saint are trying to do. And yet this idea of them trying to find Sigira or trying to find Sigira's shell at least um, does kind of make me go, hmm, like why, why would they? I, I never thought we'd really hear about Sigira ever again. Uh, so I can sort of see how this could be connected to the idea that Savathun uses uh, Sigira as like the prototype for her own ghost. Um, maybe she just has Sigira's shell on her or something. I'm not exactly sure. There are a lot of kind of questions that we don't have answers yet to about how exactly Savathun is going to get the light and how it works when she has the light. The main questions that we don't know yet. So obviously we're going to remove the worm from Savathun. I assume this is not a leak or data mining or anything this is just guessing but like i assume mara or us or someone is going to kill savathun but the problem is is that's what savathun wants because in order to be a guardian you have to die and be resurrected so i'm assuming the plan is that savathun knows that we're going to just murder her after she is quote vulnerable uh, without her worm and that is part of her plan into being resurrected as a guardian the second main question is how exactly hive guardians work because as we know the only place we are seeing Hive Guardians or Savathun with her Hive Ghost is in Savathun's Throne World. I'm a little iffy on like the rules of Throne Worlds and stuff, but they seem to be kind of like 
you know, you kind of make your own rules there. So I, I'm wondering if Savathun having a, a ghost and, and her hive brood, the luminescent brood, I forget what they're called, uh, having their own ghosts, is that something that can only happen inside Savathun's throne world? Or is this something that she can like bring into the quote, you know, real world? Uh, but it seems like it will be contained to her throne world in the Witch Queen, I believe. Uh, so... I guess the future of whether Savathun gets to keep her light and the Hive get to keep the light is different. I, I I would guess that the main plot of Witch Queen is trying to get the light away from the Hive and maybe killing their connection to the light so that doesn't work anymore. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I do think, you know, there there may be some connection to Segura here just based on kind of the, the sheer amount of clues here where... Segura's sacrifice was an important part of the, Os the entire Osiris kind of takeover in the first place because Savathun could not take over Osiris if he still had a ghost. I don't believe. I don't think she would have been able to uh, impersonate a guardian with its light. I, I just think that was kind of a key part of that puzzle. And then I don't know why Bungie would be bringing up this alternate plotline of Mithrax and Saint uh, working to hunt down where Segura fell and bringing up Segura again, unless that was somehow relevant to the story. Um, and I, I don't know when we would hear more from that story. There is one last story entry um, in this kind of journal series from Season of the Lost. All of these stories have been very disconnected from each other. They're, they're, they're kind of, I mean, they're about like the general plot line, but we've only had, I think, maybe one or two entries about Saint and Mithrax uh, so far out of seven or eight or however many it's been. Um, so I, I don't know if that, how that story concludes or what they're going to find on their own adventures. Um, if that's something that continues at the end of this season or something that continues in the witch queen uh, and then the final piece of the puzzle is just that like they kind of look similar <laughs> in that uh you know they have you know sigiri has her pointy angular shape and then also the um hive ghost that Savathun has has the little pointy spikes going out i don't know i mean we've seen all manner of bazillions of of uh ghosts in all different shapes and sizes so i don't know if that alone is an indicator but I think combined with everything else, it's worth thinking about. The other, the other kind of core question this raises is if Savathun is, quote, you know, using Segura as her ghost, does this mean, like, I would assume Hive ghosts have their own personalities, like we have our own ghost personalities. Like, it, it, it wouldn't make sense for them not to, really. Uh, so if, if this is true... Is Savathun just using Segura's ghost shell remnants to, like, trap her own ghost or something? Uh, or will this be, like, a... In, and it be, like, a new thing speaking to her? Or will it be literally Segura returning uh, and then, um, like, an evil version of Segura working as Savathun's dark ghost or whatever? And so we get Segura's voice work back. Um, obviously, everyone remembers that that is Marina Bakarin the actress from Firefly and a bazillion other things that did the voice of Segura, but she is one of the many kind of known uh, TV movie actors that were originally cast in kind of high profile roles uh, in Destiny, but have eventually kind of left because their scheduling is tough or they're too expensive or whatever. We have, this has happened with many, many, many characters, like almost all of the, the originals that were like, people you might have heard of from TV shows, uh, you know, Nathan Fillion stopped being Kate eventually, which was replaced by Nolan North. Uh, Lauren Cohen from The Walking Dead is not the Exo Stranger anymore. Uh, Jamie Chung is not Anna Bray anymore. Like, there's there's a very long list, and the only one is who is the main exception to this um, that I can think of that has consistently new lines uh, is Zavala and Lance Reddick. Um, we occasionally have gotten new Shax lines from, I believe it's still Lenny James, but this is... Uh, it's very rare, where Zavala is like talking all the time. And everyone else, very good voice actors, all of them, they're just not really necessarily people you would like recognize from a show or whatever, which I think is better because I think people that are more kind of dedicated to voice work and video game stuff um, allows more people to work on the game more often. And that's why we have all these voices now in every season, and it's fantastic. Um, I have a hard time believing Marina Bakarin would return to this to reprise her role as Segura. And yet, I think that would be a tough role to recast because I think Segura's voice was pretty iconic. Um, it would be great if that was true. And sometimes we get people back. Um, like we had, uh, you know, the Lakshmi 2 actress come back, which was fantastic, only for a season. But still, it was something. Uh, so if, I don't know, if Miranda Burkan could come back from the Witch Queen, that would be dope. But, you know, we'll see if that's in the cards. 
we are getting way ahead of ourselves. We are assuming that uh, Segura is going to be Sabathun's ghost. I think it would be a cool connection, honestly. I think at the very least, just like having her use Segura's shell to manifest her own light or contain it into her new ghost would be cool. And we could see, you know, Segura's shell be corrupted and warped into the new hive shape. Um, I, I do wonder how kind of all of the hive ghosts are created. There, there are just there are so many questions about Sabathun getting the light in her throne world that I don't even think we can really even start to begin trying to answer them because there's just too much we we don't understand yet. But um, I did find the Segura con the Segura connection interesting, and more than based on just like they kind of are the same shape. I think there's more to it than that. Um, I don't know if it's a guarantee, but I think it's something worth examining, and we will uh, check back to it in the future. Uh, anyway, that's my video for today. I don't know how many, if I'm going to be able to maintain a Destiny article and a Destiny video pretty much every day uh, during what appears to be a completely blank month of November where there is pretty much nothing new at all happening in Destiny. So I may do less videos. I may move on to other games uh, and stuff, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, also, if you missed one of my announcements on all of my social media channels besides this one, um, my wife is pregnant and we are having our first kid which is uh, expected at the end of march and uh no i definitely was not stressed out about <laughs> punchy announcing the witch queen release date uh back in august when i i knew this was happening um definitely that was not on my mind at all but um should be end of march and then obviously uh which is beginning of february and obviously having a child takes priority over all of that and we are very excited um, I wasn't going to make a fully dedicated video just about that uh, announcement, but if you go to my Instagram, my wife made a pretty cute like announcement video uh, featuring me and her and Evie um, about uh, early stages of the pregnancy here, and it's if you want to check that out, it's on my Instagram story. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you for watching and for helping me support my family by watching this, uh, which is really cool. So uh, thanks again, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.